Welcome to Addiction Free, the TV and radio show that travels nationwide. I'm your host, Candy Rose. Addictions are an epidemic, destroying lives, causing families to be torn apart. But on this show, you'll hear from our guests testifying of their own freedom or those of a loved one. Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If you've been redeemed, walk the walk, so others will want who you have. Jesus. Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And oh my, I got to travel to Chattanooga, Tennessee and be at Abba's house, Pastor Ronnie Phillips Jr. And matter of fact, you've probably already seen the show that I did of him. I came here last week and interviewed him for my show. And now there's an amazing conference going on here. When he has something come up and you see it on Facebook, get on over here to Chattanooga. Anyway, I am with Danielle. And Danielle, Teresa Biggs told me about her. And she's uh, part of Celebrate Recovery. And you have an amazing testimony. I heard a little bit about it a while ago, but yeah. would you please tell our viewers what your life was like when you was in your addiction? Yes. So it was pretty hard. Um, I didn't really know it was hard because um, when I was molested at a very young age, I kind of repressed that memory. So I was always um, trying to cover that, you know, just with anything that brought some type of pleasure, like, you know, or like that rush. So. I was, um, I stole, I cheated, I lied, anything that I could do to make myself feel like I was in control of my life. Yes. Um, So throughout my life, um, I made really bad decisions. Uh, I, um, and I used, I didn't, before, so I went into the military when I was 18. And before that, while I did make lots of bad decisions, I wasn't heavy into addiction. Okay. It really kind of started while I was in the military. And what part of the service was you? I was in the Navy. Okay. Um, and so a lot of, um, I was married two times while I was in the mi- uh, military. Um, and there was just a lot of pain throughout that time. And I remember having surgery while I was in the military and they gave me opioids. Mm. Oh boy. And it was over after that because that yes. took the pain away. Yes. Uh, in every sense of the word. It took the numbness, you know, it gave me that numbness that I saw it mm-hmm. and it got rid of the pain. So. When I got out of the military, I um, that just continued. I had many times inside the military where I tried to commit suicide because wow. of the pain. Mm-hmm. And I, wow. um, you know, they didn't know how to deal with that back then. So you I ended up- You didn't have to get out? I did, did. Okay. I did have to get out. Because so, of that? Because of that, yeah. yeah. So because they just didn't know how to deal with it okay. back then. Um, they're correcting that now, which is amazing, through the Good. VA. Good. Um, but after the military, I kind of just went into a downward spiral. I was working as a medical assistant, and you know, I wrote prescriptions um, off the doctor. I ended up going to prison. A lot of stuff happened during that time. Oh, that so you wrote your prescriptions Off for the doctors yourself. that I was working oh, for. Oh, yeah. okay. So um, that's fraud, you know, yes. and so I went to jail. I went to prison. They tried to give me a chance through drug court. Um, I had a son during that time, and that's what got me off of the drugs and able to complete drug court at that time. Okay. But I didn't really get clean until 2013. I didn't really change my life until, we, until my husband and I, my husband now, um, came together, and we were in a desperate time in our lives where we needed the Lord, Okay. And we both cried out to him at different times. Sean was inside the, the garage, and I was in the bathroom on the tile floor just crying. Aww. And we both cried out to God that day, and God answered. Oh. So, yes. Wow. And I think the next day, we were searching for a church. Okay. And um, the Lord just, um, gosh, so much healing during that time. But my mom showed me Abba's house. She said yeah. that, you know, they show things online. So yes. go ahead and watch that. And so yes. we did. Yes. Um, and that was on a Sunday. But um, on Wednesday, we wanted to go to church. And the Lord is so funny. You know, he'll, he'll push you right where you're supposed yes. to go. Yes. So every church in our area was closed um, that Wednesday. Or they were having like a, you know, a budget night, you know. So we left the um, those those churches and we 
Abba's house was open. Yes. And we Praise came. God. Yes. <laughs> and Pastor Ronnie Phillips was preaching on Greasy Grace. Oh, and wow. it was what we needed. Aww. And the Lord has just worked amazingly through that time. Um, we've, wow. we've healed in so many ways. Um, and I just can't say enough about um, Jesus and what he's done for us. Yes. And Celebrate Recovery. Because Celebrate Recovery is the place to be. Um, it's for those, he- it's not just for addictions, it's for the, the healing and the, of habits and hurts and hangups and the steps class that they do and the Jesus, you know, just being focused on Jesus instead of the addiction is yes. really, yes. The, you know, because addiction isn't real. It's, it's, it's something that is a byproduct of the yes. pain. Yes. So, uh, you know, addiction is just a piece of it that, that, that Jesus will, that Jesus always heals, um, if you allow him to. So. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And your husband yes. plays in the band. He does. He plays in the recovery. Celebrate Recovery Band at Abba's house. And if you live in the Chattanooga area, please come and visit. It's a wonderful program and uh, we'd love to have you. Yes. Well, thank you, Danielle, yes, so you're welcome. much. It was great meeting you, Candy. Oh, God bless you. Thank Thanks you. for sharing your story. Yes. Anytime. We have some more testimonies coming up, so don't go away. Well, friends, I have a wonderful guest here, Selena Alejandro. Did I say that right? Yes. Oh, good. All right. You're a pastor, aren't you? I am. Would you tell our folks uh, what happened and how you even ended up in addiction? Did you have a hurtful past? Sure, yes. Um, We come from a dysfunctional family, total dysfunction, fighting every day. It was uh, moving from place to place, sleeping in war houses, sleeping in the car, um, and then one day when my mother was divorced, uh, she met someone who invited to us to her, the house, and each and every one of us girls was molested by this man. Oh. Our dignity was taken. Oh. We were treated like trash. Oh, no. And I think that's what began. No, I don't think. I know that's what began my road to um, not having self-worth. Yes. You know, you feel like... You are nobody. You are somebody that people can actually come and trash on you. They can go in the toilet on you because that's what I felt, you know. And, of course, and later on as I grew, I was trying to get my life together, but it was very difficult because I was trying to do it on my own. And later on, of course, you learn you can't do anything no. on your own. You no. need help. That's right. You need help. Yes. And then uh, one day I was working trying to raise my little girl by myself. I had no help. I had no family around. And I had to go to get and make a phone call because I was saving all my money to put my daughter in good schools. Okay. And uh, as I walk into the last block, all of a sudden I'm airborne. A man has his arm around my throat <gasps> and he's choking me. Oh my. He's trying to kill me. Wow. He says, I'm going to rape you and if you scream, I'm going to kill you. And all the whole time he's choking me. Oh no. And all I can say, God, my little girl, my little girl, all of a sudden oh. as he positioned himself, he, I had the freedom to say, beg for my daughter's life. I didn't beg for my life. Oh. Cause I, I it was my daughter. I said, who's gonna love her? Who's gonna oh. take care of oh. her? And I said, and he said, I said, I promise I'll never say anything. Never, 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 I, I don't even know you. Just do what you gotta do, please don't kill me. And he put his arm down, he started to choke me. And then he finally released me. Um, And then uh, after that, it was just total turmoil, nightmares, nightmares. Many things happened, of course, but it was the nightmares. I went to the doctors, I said, please, I need help. I can't sleep, I have nightmares. They gave me pills to get up, pills to to be able to function during the day, pills oh, to go to sleep. Oh. That didn't work, so I started wow. to drink. Yeah, wow. And every day I went to bed totally drunk. Oh, man. I couldn't function at work. I finally got fired. Wow. And But God being grateful, such grace and loving and kind, he put women in my path. And he put Pamela Trivola in my path, and I love that woman because she took me to her home Bible study. Now, I wanted nothing to do with God, okay? okay? I didn't want anything. I cursed him. I told him where to go. I want nothing to do with him because I blamed him for everything that happened Yeah, that's to me. what we tend to do in life. Right. Yes, and where it's the devil. what the enemy wants you to think. That's right. It's his fault so that's he right. can alienate that's right. you from your future. That's right. But I didn't know that. I wasn't a Christian. Yeah, yeah. we don't you know? know that before then. I didn't know that. 
So she took me to this Bible study, and I said, oh, dear Lord. I said, Pamela, I'll go because I love you, but this is not my thing. Yeah. And I went, and they gave me a Bible, and I started reading about the love of God <laughs> and his mercy and all that. And I <laughs> said, right. I, can, I like this. I, I received this word. Aww. But I didn't know that Jesus was the word. Yeah, yes. So yes. I received him without even knowing it. Aww. And the next day when I got up, I was actually a different person. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I went through my closet, threw out all provo uh, provoking, uh, provoking clothing and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Yes. And my roommate says, Selena, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I just don't want this anymore. Praise God, that happened to me too, because I yeah, was a stripper yeah, and a prostitute. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got listen, rid of that stuff. <laughs> listen, we all do things in different forms. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same. The yeah. pain is the yeah. same. The yes, suffering is. is the same. Yes. You know, so then after that, I still... I said, okay, so I accepted Christ, my Lord and Savior, but why am I going 10 pesos forward, 100 back? There's something wrong with me. Something's wrong. Why? And then Dr. Um, um, oh God, uh, a doctor friend of mine, Noel, Dr. Noel, uh, Lenore Noel said to me, Selena, did you forgive the man that raped you? I go, no. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I wanted him to suffer, but the only one that's suffering was me. That's because right. Because the actions, uh, my actions, my attitude, the way I portrayed myself, he was directing by the pain he caused me. Yes, yes, that's right. Right. So the Lord says to me, Selena, if you don't forgive him, I can't forgive that's you. That's right. Yes. I said, but God, look what he did to me. He yes. tried to ruin my life. He said, yes, but when you die, when he dies, he won't be with me. But did you do? You will. So I need you to forgive me. I said, okay, Lord, I choose. Because yes. it's a choice to forgive. Oh, yes, it is. That's right. I said, Lord, I choose to forgive that man. Yes. And I started to pray for him. I actually started to All pray right. for this Praise man. Praise God. I said, Lord, yes. save him so he doesn't rape anymore and ruin any more yes. lives, yes. Father. Yes, yes. So then from there, God, I started ministering, believe enough, to women who were trying to minister to me at the beginning. Aww. And that started my ministry. So my ministry now is I traveled for 17 years to third world countries to help women wow. who have been raped, molested, oh, abused, emotionally, honey. physically, all kinds awesome. of abuses. And by the grace of God, I give him the glory, I've had a great success. And one of my girls, because I also go to the jails okay. to minister and yes. to teach. Yes. And one of my girls, oh gosh, she's doing, all my girls, I should say, are doing great by the grace of God. Yes. And now it's time consuming but it's a rewarding yes. to see them stop the drugs and and shooting up and, and all the things that they do and, and ruining their bodies yes you know and when you see them flourish yeah and they receive christ and yes. cleanse and they are free oh my god it's the most wonderful thing yes. in the world yes and it's rewarding yes and today I'm an associate pastor here at Ava's House. Awesome. And I have my own ministry, as I said, with women. Wow, that is beautiful. And I don't Woo. give that up for anything in the world because yes. wow. there's nothing more wonderful seeing a woman who has been destroyed by the world. Yes. Coming into Christ. Yes. Learning about their authority in Christ and who they really are. Yes. And then seeing a future in their lives because that's right. Satan's no longer involved there. That's right. So yes, yeah, that's that's my story. Thank you, God. <laughs> and and you know what? That's what God wants to do mm -hmm. in your life. Whatever has happened to you, don't mm -hmm. hold it back. And the biggest mm -hmm. thing I think too to learn is to forgive. Oh yes. Because most mm -hmm. of us in our lives, we mm -hmm. have had we have been hurt, really wounded, and the devil does want us yes, to stay yes, in the pit yes. of feeling mm -hmm. unforgiveness. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. My God pleasure. bless you for sharing. God bless you. Well, friends, I have another guest for you. This is Kimberly Teal. And my friend, Teresa Biggs, she told me that this lady has an amazing testimony. And this is, this is what I like. I like people to brag on Jesus because we know it was nothing but God that changed right. us. So, Kimberly, would you kind of look into the camera and tell the folks what happened in your life, how you started in addictions, and please tell some of the consequences and some of the, the hurtful things, but then tell about the restoration towards Absolutely. the end. Thank okay. you. It's truly an honor, first of all. Um, so when I was about 16, uh, I, well, two weeks after my 16th birthday, I left home, and um, it was to be with a man that ended up being very abusive mentally. Oh and physically 
Sorry. And um, so I was with him until I was 18. And when I was able to leave, um, right after that, I found myself pregnant with just, you know, by myself, my family um, wouldn't have anything to do with me at that time still. And um, so I ended up working in a massage parlor after I had my daughter to support her and I. And in doing that, to really cope. Sorry, these are actually Jesus tears. Um, I began using drugs. Um, in the beginning, it was just drinking and marijuana, and then, you know, as time went on, it got to be whatever anybody else had. Um, meth was the last drug of choice. Um, in 2006, St. Patrick's Day of 2006, though, that is when. Jesus really came into my life, but it was because I had um, gotten a, a prostitution charge, and it was the third time I was up for revocation. Well, instead of revoking it, they gave me community service. I had 120 hours, sorry. And um, the only place I could go was a ministry for women. It was a thrift store, and they had a ministry for women. And Praise God! Because of my prostitution charge, um, after I finished my community service there, I was able to get into the transitional housing that they supported. Um, I had other legal things. I had also gotten a felony case for possession of cocaine. And so I still had to deal with that. Um, by the grace of God, I wasn't revoked. And I also just... Uh, was able to get a deferred sentence on my felony. But because of those charges, God actually brought the best thing into my life. Like him, he brought me him. So I ended up working at that uh, thrift store for about eight years. Really? Oh, I I love that. I left as a manager and um, it's just been (laughs) me and my girls. Um, I just celebrated 15 years and six months on the 17th. Wow. So that is all God. And then now, um, so he's given me a job that I get to minister to people every day. Yes, yes. And just knowing that he can use someone that used to not even be able to look in the mirror. Oh, um, that's Praise just his God. love. Like, I'm so yes. nervous and I'm crying right now, but it's because, you know, I'm nervous, but I know I have to share his story. That's right. That's, that's the only thing that that's who changes me. us. Absolutely. Yes, he Absolutely. rescues us. He does. He yes. does. And so I just, a year ago, I moved to this area. And while that's been the scariest thing, yes. when I had nobody but him, it's okay. just drawn me even closer to him. Um, and it's just amazing what's happening. And, and the, my friend actually came from Oklahoma and she said, I cannot believe how many people you have in recovery in your life. Wow. And it's just such an honor and such a blessing that he's now using me. Oh, look at that. That's what he loves to do. (laughs) He likes to take the broken and hurting and turn around in us, take all our sadness and 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 reach out and tell somebody else that he is the he's the one that will forgive them and give them power and give them purpose. Yes. And make you new. That's important because sometimes it's the shame that's the hardest to let go, but it's not mine to carry anymore. No, it's not. And you know what? We have a lot in common. I was you there the night I spoke it? No, I was, okay. at, I was at work. Okay, well, did you know that I was a former stripper and a prostitute? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, girl. Yes. Jesus rescued me, too. I just never got busted <laughs> on prostitution <laughs> charges, or I would have been been like you. Yeah. But uh, And I went on later in life to manage the world's largest Salvation Army thrift store and then to own oh thrift gosh. stores of my own. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, here, and here you say you, you worked at a thrift <laughs> store. Look, we look have here. a lot in common. Yes, we do. Thank and you. We, and the most we have yeah. in common is we have our Jesus. Us, Absolutely. who loves us so much. and changed so much. us yes. and rescued us and folks that's what he wants to do in your life Absolutely. you're watching this show and 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 you're and and you may feel like you are not worthy that you what you've done is so bad that God wouldn't forgive you well hey that's who he came for yeah. he said he came for those that are sick not whole and we and the devil he just he's the one that makes us sin sick yes. but Jesus is our healer so I want to take this time right now. Kimberly and I are going to agree in prayer that you're going to give your life to Jesus. Don't let what you've done 
uh, hold you back from him. He loves you. He's calling you with his love right now even. As you've been hearing the, the testimonies on this show today, you, you've you been feeling that tug on your heart. And maybe you lived for the Lord at one time, but maybe you're back out there again. And, and, and you know that, that God's calling you. You see, there's more to life than just making money or having fun or getting high. There, there's purpose. He wants to take that brokenness, yes. right, Kimberly? Yes. Just right like where you are. You don't have to get better. You don't have to do anything first right where you are. Yes, because what he'll do, he'll change you. Right right now, you don't you don't have to clean. They say don't have to clean yourself up before you come. Because what will happen is once you make that commitment, Holy Spirit will come inside you yes. and give you the power, the person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, a person will come inside and help guide you and strengthen you yes. and and give you that desire to live for him with your whole heart all you got to do is be willing to let the old life behind confess and forsake be willing to let it go you're willing to let it go you'll have jesus. the power yes, right Lord. kimberly Absolutely. so just say this prayer after us say jesus forgive me of my sins thank you for dying on the cross for me Thank you for loving me. I love you too, Jesus. I'm going to live for you with my whole heart. I'm going to turn my back on that old lifestyle. Use my life now, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've said that prayer and you meant it, you go to church, read your Bible, and talk to the one who loves you and died for you, Jesus. Kimberly, thank you. Thank you. God bless honor. you, honey. My daddy's a preacher With a heart made of gold Church folk call me trouble Since I was five years old I ran from religion And the hell it could bring Wound up in a jail cell With other rebels like me Born in the shadows But washed in the blood Desperate for purpose While misunderstood Some demons drag me right through the mud. Born in the shadow, washed in the blood. Pastor Ronnie has written a, a book called The Hero Within, and that is the Holy Spirit. That's who can keep you on the right path that's who one who comforts you and enables you and gives you the power to be able to walk the walk and be able to testify and do all god's called you to do and this is also another book that him and his dad pastor ron phillips uh, the power of agreement and boy if we don't need that now in this world more than ever you want to say anything about these books sure the hero within is about the anointing religion will fail you but the holy spirit won't the holy spirit will lead you guide you teach you comfort you and you need an anointing and i call the anointing when god puts his super on your natural yes. and the most powerful revelation in this i have a chapter on music history called who hijacked the anointing and we go all the way back before elvis to hank williams to marvin gay whatever the church rejects the enemy hijacks mm -hmm. and we go through music history who hijacked the anointing is one of the most powerful revelations i've ever brought out that's why i wrote the book and it will help you know who you are in christ and be who you were created to be and the power of agreement candy we wrote this forever ago and it's just now coming to fruition people are buying it and we can't believe it because it's an old book but yeah. we need agreement coin yeah. you know koinonia is fellowship yes and agreement is symphonia we get our word symphony from it okay and symphony if it's a great symphony everybody plays their part 
and does their part under the sound and the direction of the Ooh, conductor. And if we'll all it. serve the king and do what we're called to do, we'll have agreement. We yes. have plenty we can agree on in the kingdom of God in this yes. country. So yes. I believe God wants to bring agreement. Yes. So get these books. And how do they get it? You can go to the HeroWithinBook.com, RonniePhillips.org, my website. But for the power of agreement, you have to go to Amazon.com. It's an older book. You just search The Power of Agreement, Ron and Ronnie Phillips, on Amazon.com only. You can get that one. But this one you can get at RonniePhillips.org. All right. Thank you. God bless. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. Greetings in Jesus' name. Teen Challenge Women's Ministries has now changed its name to Adult and Teen Challenge of the Greater South. Why? Well, first of all, we're no longer just women. We have a men's center in Russellville, Arkansas. And of the Greater South, we've opened our fifth state. We are a faith-based recovery program, but first it starts with a conversation, you reaching out. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis and Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages, we deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine-month Christ-centered program we provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life-controlling issues and addiction. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry? When he came to set you free, Did it take you your whole lifetime to release the debt you owe? Hi friends, once again this is Candy Rose thanking you for tuning in. Come back every week if you can and please tell others. My theme scripture is Psalms 107.2 Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So I encourage you now to go share your testimony. And as you walk the walk, which is important, others will want who you have, Jesus. So let's make a difference. Jesus truly loves you, and so do I. My website is addictionfreetv.com.